G'day YouTube, Bauble's on a lot here. Let's see whether this Schrodinger's chainsaw is actually a chainsaw or just a hole in the universe that looks like a chainsaw. Now of course, because it says thou shalt not use a knife, therefore, of course, we have to use a knife. That's how unboxings work. Is that not so? Here we have, apparently, a chaining of the saw. What do we have? Okay, so there we go. We have a plastic bar cover. Well, it cost about 20 bucks in the shop. We have a new bar. Probably 60 bucks or so. We have some tools. We have a log spike. A few screws. We have a chain, we have the manual, which was in fact downloaded as per the instructions. We have a mixing bottle for the fuel. We have the body of the saw itself inside a plastic bag, as is the cutter bar. There we go. The $129. Pure Chinesium, Schrodinger's Chainsaw. Some assembly required. I am going to uh, pull the plug and turn it upside down and see if any oil drains out because the first one my son received had been shipped with oil in the crankcase, presumably as a corrosion inhibitor. The second one he received for his apprentice didn't have that feature. So I don't know whether this one's gonna have an oil-soaked crankcase and an oil-soaked plug or not. But at least the plug socket fits. And it was extraordinarily tight. And by the look of it, it has in fact been test run. As you can see, by the soot that came off the plug and onto my fingers. It pulls and it turns, and when I pulled it and when I turned it inverted, nothing fell out of it. So it's probably not shipped with oil this time. It does take a little bit of jiggery pokery to get that rubber seal around the baffle plate on the plug lead to actually fit in and it needs to be properly fitted into place. Otherwise, you're gonna get hot air coming out from around the cylinder and baking the carburetor. And that's a known problem with some chainsaws. And it turns out that that air filter does in fact have to sit slightly askew. It's not actually symmetrical. That is how it sits. Just a little bit skew whiff. By the magic of the internoodle, it has been brought to my son's attention that an O-ring in here can prevent sawdust from getting down that little hole there around that stud and thereby save you from getting chainsaw dust inside the air filter. So we'll do that by the addition of that little O-ring there which sits in place thusly, thus providing a backup for that Teflon washer, which holds the air cleaner in place and seals its cover on. Okay, so that worked, and that cover actually fits all the way along. And the other end of the plug spanner works to take the side cover off. And to behold, all the mechanism of the chain brake is mounted on the inside of the side cover. And the chain sprocket is actually inside the clutch. It's just kind of the reverse 
what I'm used to on stills, but you know, no reason why it can't work that way. So the chain goes on before the bar is introduced to the equation. Yes, the bar star nose guide freely turns then it's not particularly difficult to get that to all fit into place. The only trick worth mentioning here is that it's worthwhile making sure that this chain tension adjusting stud lines up with the locating hole in the bar before trying to put the side plate on. If that's in the wrong spot, it will give you no end of trouble. If you get that right first time, it's easy. And then when you get them done up finger tight, that's when you remember that we haven't fitted the dog teeth. So we rapidly disassemble back to that point and using the Allen key provided, We attach the dogs, reattach the chain and the bar, replace the side cover with the nuts on finger tight. Then by tightening up this little screw here, we can take the slack out of the chain by effectively lengthening the bar or the distance between the bar's nose tip Oh, look at that. I've put the bar on upside down. And that won't matter a bit. Then we do those little nuts up. And we give it a bit of a check. So far, everything's looking good. Once again, danger warnings all over the everything. And it warns you that it's been shipped without petrol. And it provides you with a petrol mixing jug calibrated for 25 parts of petrol to one part of oil gotta say i normally run my still on 50 to one and i run my whipper snipper and brush cutter on a 35 to one but it's a new chainsaw and the people who built the thing know what it's expecting so i will feed it 25 to one at least for a while now this is kind of interesting I needed 25 mils of oil and I used the little measuring secondary container on this bottle of still semi-synthetic high performance two-stroke oil. This thing suggests filling up to 576 here and then going up the last 25 mil to there to 600. But if you pour it in from the bottom, it's also got your 25 mils along the bottom and that way you can put your oil in first and then put your petrol in and you can wash the oil into the petrol and make sure that it's all evenly distributed. So I'm going to call that a clever little bit of Chinesium. All things considered. Okay, ready to go. Okay, well, even when I leveled the chainsaw on the table, it still didn't quite take the full 600 mils. Took about, uh, well, I'm guessing 575 mils. Yeah. Leaving a tiny amount of spillage upon the table. So now we top her up with Super El Cheapo. Get it for nothing from your local service station second hand engine oil for bar lube. Okay, ignition is on, choke is set. This is the first time out of the box. We'll see what happens. Ideally, this is going to start.
So the first thing we notice is it's not quite precisely still orange and it's not quite precisely Husqvarna orange either. And it looks as if the chain needs a bit of adjustment after having run for five seconds. Okay, we'll see if it starts up a second time. So, we'll have a go at this. First I'll see if it's putting any oil on the plate. So now we've got oil on the chain and it's loose again. Okay, well here's one bad habit. You can't alter the flow of bar lube and it throws its bar lube up through that slot and onto the chain brake actuation lever. That's a bit sad, but you know, $129 chainsaw, how bad can it be? I guess we shall find out. Oh. Uh -huh. 
okay. I give up. What's the catch? What's wrong with it? Why are they selling it so incredibly cheap? It was $150 two weeks ago. A week ago it was $129. Now it's apparently $119. Drop the price $30 in two and a half weeks. At this rate, literally, by Christmas they'll be giving them away for free. And a week later they'll be paying you to take them out of the shop. I really can't see anything wrong with one of these. My feeling is that um, any manufacturer who can come up not only with the legalese on the box, but a super comprehensive manual, nine pages in before you get to the table of contents, or eight pages, Basically, it appears that all four of their saws have the same engine, and they just have different features. Um, like the plastic case on this one has a place where, theoretically, you can vary the amount of bar lube going onto the chain. In actual fact, it's a blind hole with nothing sticking into it. But uh, it's, it's a comprehensive manual. And this is all just in English, you know, they give you tips and hints on how to fell a tree, all the things that you would normally find in a still brand new chainsaw manual, including a maintenance schedule. Bloody oily fingers don't want to work the paper. It, it's a bit of a multi-purpose manual not all of the saws illustrated are the ones that you're actually supplied with, but it means they only have to print one manual for all of their range of chainsaws. And according to me son, for $300, they will also sell you an Alaskan slamming type sawmill. Spare parts catalog. So for some variable amount of time, all these bits and pieces will be available. Available. Tells you how to pull the thing to pieces, put it all back together. And I think the engine is basically pretty close to that of a Tanaka TB500 brush cutter engine. Just looking at how far apart the cylinder cooling fins are and the way they've got a bloody great big hole going down through all of them to hold the, uh, allow access to the crankcase bolts. And it doesn't even drip bar lube out the base, which there was a few internet warnings about some of them doing. However, as I said, it does indeed paint the right hand edge of the chain brake actuation lever with bar lube as the chain comes up and over the sprocket chain comes down here goes up and over the sprocket as it goes along here it throws bar lube up there it's not really going to be a problem it doesn't seem to get any bar lube on the actual handle just gets it on there and in that little bit of cutting It's quite a bit of bar lube up onto there. But yeah, well, okay. Every chainsaw has its idiosyncrasies. And that is one demonstrated by this. Other than that, yeah, I cannot see why or how anybody can sell that saw in Glen Innes for $130 out of China when the still comes out of Austria and it's $1,400 26 years ago and I think they're about the same now. 
whether the Chinesium is going to run for 370 hours like the steel has, that's another question. But as I said the other day, it's only got to cut one load of firewood and it's done its job. My son has returned with his load of firewood. So, warbles on a lot to YouTube. Job done. Saw reviewed. It works. Have a good one. Ciao.